Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1039. You've been warned. Hello, my Nakamantachi. This is Joy Girl. Today, we're going to discuss the future bounties for Law and Kid post Wano. Now, this is a video topic that quite a few people have asked me to do quite a number of times in the past, but bounty predictions isn't really something that I like doing, mostly because numbers aren't my forte. I don't really like numbers, especially after what a disappointment numbers have been in the Wano arc. <laughs> All right, that was a low blow. I'm sorry, that was just a joke. You know what? Numbers could actually become really, really interesting. And some of the numbers actually have become really intriguing after what we saw between Fuga and Yamato. <laughs> but that's besides the point. And you know what? That was actually even a lie. Fun fact, I actually came first in general maths for my state when I was doing my end of high school exam. Now, to give you a little context, general maths is the lowest level of maths that you could do. But hey, at least I topped my state in it. But anyway, sidetrack over. Let's get into this topic. So, bounties for Law and Kid. So given that Law and Kid's fight against Big Mom is now essentially over, I imagine that that was pretty much it. So unless we get something more for these characters as Wano inches closer to the finale and to the end of the arc, I do think it's a pretty good time to assess these supernova captains and then start speculating what this could mean in terms of their bounties, in terms of their future post Wano. Now I want to set a few parameters. A parameter for my expectations about what their bounties post Wano will be. That being that I've already discuss my post Wano bounty predictions for the Straw Hats in another video. And in that video, I saw Luffy having a bounty of 3.5 billion berries at the end of Wano. And I think that that's still a pretty reasonable number. So then when it comes to Law and Kid, I'm going to give them bounties lower than that 3.5 billion berries because I do think that their bounties will be lower than Luffy's quite substantially lower actually. And I think that for a number of reasons. First of all, their current bounties are significantly lower than Luffy's current bounty. Law as of right now is sitting at 500 million berries and Kid is at 470 million berries. Whereas Luffy has already broken into the billionaires club as of this moment sitting at 1.5 billion berries. Whereas obviously Law and Kid have yet to broken into that yet. So obviously that's not a huge reason because they could just get astronomical increases in their bounties to match Luffy's. But given that they're already starting from a significantly lower spot, I do think that there's going to be quite the difference between them, even after a potentially huge increase. But the bigger reason why I think that they're going to have a much lower bounty than Luffy's is because of the circumstances of the fights that are taking place and of their roles at Wano. I just think Wano's been an arc that has really put the shine on Luffy. It's an arc where we've gotten to see that he's really on a new level. And look, we could probably say that all of the captains have had pretty good showings in this arc. All of the supernovas have been pretty impressive, actually, especially the ones who participated in Roof Peace. But really, I don't think people could dispute that Luffy has risen to another level. The speed at which he's developed and advanced in terms of his combat, the speed at which he's come to understand and utilize Advanced Conqueror's Haki, for example, has just been phenomenal. And because of this, we really now get the feeling that he is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Kaido. Albeit, this is obviously a Kaido who has come under the attack by a lot of different groups and individuals, like the Scabbards, for example, again, the Supernova on Roof Piece, and then Yamato as well. But still, it has been really impressive from Luffy. Whereas the situation or the fight between Lauren Kid against Big Mom is a little bit different to that of Luffy and Kaido. One of the main points of intrigue and sometimes even contention in the fanbase was how this fight was going to play out. This fight against Big Mom and the two Supernova captains how that was even going to work because there was this great question of believability that these two would be able to win against Big Mom. For a while the conversation surrounding Big Mom at Wano and her role here in this arc was whether she was actually going to leave the arc still an undefeated Yonko and would still be playing a role in the future of the series. Now that's not necessarily something that I believed in because I did make a video I was actually in the minority and I've been saying for a while that Lauren Kidd defeating Big Mom would actually make sense for the story. But I do think that that was somewhat of an unpopular opinion. And again, I think that says a lot about Luffy because no one, hardly no one, expects Luffy to not win against Kaido in this war. When we think about Luffy's fight with Kaido, it's almost just a matter of when Luffy's going to beat him. Whereas in the case with Law and Kid, it was almost a matter of how on earth are they going to defeat Big Mom? And this is actually something that I think Oda's done a really good job in. Making Law and Kid's win over Big Mom 
believable and cool for the supernova captains while still not diminishing Big Mom's character. It's something that I mentioned during my chapter 1039 review that even now as she's getting defeated, as it seems like she's being taken down, she just remains so, so cool and she just demands so much respect. And even now, they've only really managed to do so through the combined efforts of both Law and Kid and really they both had to give it their all. It's through this fight that we've been able to see their awakenings, they've been able to take their devil fruits to this extent and as Law said in the last chapter, he has nothing left. But needless to say, even though we haven't gotten that final confirmation yet, we haven't gotten that narration box confirming her defeat, I think it's safe to say that they have essentially achieved it. That essentially she has been defeated or she's pretty damn close. But nonetheless, this victory for Law and Kid, or soon to be victory, has come under very, very different circumstances. Again, whereas Luffy's been engaged in a one-on-one -on -one match against Kaido, the fight against Big Mom has been a two-on-one -on -one match. And on top of this, I don't think that Law and Kid are going to get as much as recognition from the world government because of the fact that they were fighting Big Mom. Now, I mean that as no disrespect to Big Mom. I think she is a really terrifying, really strong character, but ultimately she is just one person. A beast of a human for sure, but just one all the same. And I think it's really important to remember that Oda made sure that Big Mom is alone in this arc. And I think Oda has actually intentionally taken out the Big Mom children away from the arc, away from the story for this purpose. Because another huge difference between the fights between Luffy and Kaido and Kid and Law against Big Mom is that Luffy has taken on the entire Beast Pirates. Obviously, I don't mean that personally, that Luffy alone is fighting the whole of the Beast Pirates. He obviously has his alliance behind him, but it's Luffy that declared war on Kaido, on the Beast Pirates, and even on Big Mom. And so I think there is going to be a difference in how the world government perceive and recognize Luffy as marching into Wano to take on not only Kaido, but his entire crew and in his own home base, in his own territory. And this is obviously going to be different to how they see Law and Kid, who yes, fought an empress, but fought her alone, away from her family, separated from her home base. Because I think what's important to remember is that the Yonko are not by themselves Yonko. I've actually talked about this before, so feel free to watch that video. But an emperor or empress alone is not what makes them a Yonko. Of course, they do have to be strong in their own right as the captain or as the leader, but they gain this status as a Yonko through a lot of things, including the strength of their crew overall, as well as their territory, the territories that they have under their control. It's really about what makes them a threat and how the power they have under their control makes them such a force that they're able to balance against all the other forces. So then when you look at it from that perspective, yes, taking on and defeating Big Mom is a huge achievement, but defeating her and her alone isn't the same thing as taking on an entire Yonko crew and doing so in their own territory. And these are the reasons why I think Law and Kid's bounties post Wano will actually be much lower than the bounty I predicted for Luffy. So for these two, I'm going to put them between a 2.5 to make maybe 3 billion range. Now, if I have to be specific and come down to just one number, which I don't really like doing because I think numbers can be just arbitrarily chosen. And when you're dealing with millions and billions, how do you come down to just one number? But for the sake of this video, I will give it a shot. Now, kid, I'm going to say 2.4949 billion berries. And the only reason why I came down to this specific bounty is because of a potential pun we could make with the numbers. Now, if you speak or have a good understanding of Japanese, then please confirm if I got this right or wrong. But I think you could make out the 4949 as Jiki Jiki in Japanese, which is obviously a reference to his devil fruit. Now, I know that's not entirely correct because 4 is usually pronounced as she and 9 is pronounced pronounced as Q or Ku, but it's my understanding that there can be some leeway with this. For example, when you look at Roger's Devil Fruit 5.5648, that apparently contains Roger's name in it through the numbers 648 Ro Ji Ya, even though it would really be more like Ro Shi Ha, which is why I thought maybe I could apply the same and go with 4949 Jiki Jiki. But like I said, correct me if that's not right. But then using that basis and moving on to Law's bounty, it seems like when it comes to Law, Oda likes to give him nice, 
whole rounded numbers. We started off with 200 million berries and then 400 million and now we're sitting at 500 million for Law. So when it comes to his post Wano bounty, I was thinking of giving him another nice whole rounded number going with 2.5 billion berries. Now obviously this will shake things up quite a bit because that means Kid has a lower bounty than Laws and it is actually something that I've had to grapple with. Because on one hand, I do think it's quite unlikely that Oda's going to change the rivalry dynamic between Kid and Luffy. Oda's made quite an effort to establish that rivalry and then has actually gone to some lengths to maintain it at Wano as well. You know, this dynamic was seen at the Uda on prisons, but then even continued into Onigashima, even down to the point of Kid taking that final blow on Big Mom, as we saw in chapter 1039. So why would Oda change this now? You know, why would he take away this rivalry now? But then on the flip side, an easy counter to this is that obviously bounties are not the be-all and end-all of power, of strength in One Piece. And also, this could actually be how Oda changes and establishes the new dynamic between the supernova captains post-Wano. In terms of the character relationships and how they interact with each other, I think it's quite possible, even likely, that Luffy and Kid will remain rivals. But when we look at it in terms of real strength, I think it's pretty clear that Law and Kid are at a much more comparable level and Luffy stands above in a league of his own. And so maybe the bounties will actually play a part in how Oda establishes this new dynamic and the rivalry between Luffy and Kid could still remain. And also this way, this could set up some nice comedy between Kid and Law now, you know, they've now spent quite a good amount of time together to really establish a dynamic of their own. And I wouldn't mind seeing more of their squabbling because it is something that I enjoyed immensely during their fight. But anyways, they're the bounties that I have arbitrarily come up with. Let me know your thoughts on my bounties and let me know your predictions by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like to hear more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server and even become a Patreon member. And thank you to our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.